How's it going guys? I'm your host Carbine Gaming. Welcome back to a very special Dragon Faber video and for today's video, I'm going to be going through with you guys 20 tips and tricks for new and returning players. So whether you are a new player who just discovered the game yesterday or a returning player logging back into your account 10 years later on, you guys will probably find some useful tips and tricks inside of this video to help you improve your gameplay. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so my first tip is actually to use Flash Projector or NRVP's unofficial Dragon Faber launcher to play Dragon Faber. Given the current state of the Arctic Games launcher right now and the numerous complaints that have come from so many people regarding performance issues and lag, I simply cannot recommend the official Arctic Games launcher at least until they improve their software for that. Keep in mind that NRVP's unofficial Dragon Faber launcher and the Flash Projector are unofficial methods of playing the game, so do so at your own risk, but to my knowledge, they are 100% safe, they have been tested by by many players including myself so you can rest assured that your gameplay experience will be much smoother on either of these two softwares without the risk of getting banned. If you guys need a complete guide on where and how to download these two softwares I will link the video to the card in the top right hand corner of the screen right now so you guys can go ahead and check it out. If you're using either of the two softwares that I mentioned earlier in the previous tip or if you're using the official Arctic Games launcher and still experiencing performance issues like lag for whatever reason, here are some other things that you can try to improve your gameplay performance, okay? So after you log into your character in the bottom central of your screen right here, you'll see an options button. You want to click on it, turn your graphics down to low and you want to turn off weather effects. Now, weather effects does not affect majority of the quests inside of the game and only a certain... Uh, very few of the newer quests actually have some fancy weather effects. Granted, you won't be able to see the nice artwork, but if it does help to smooth out your gameplay experience, then why not? Okay, another thing that I, another tip that I have for you guys is to actually hide your Dragon Amulet Scythe of Elementals, whether it's the Ultimate version, the Doom version, and to a lesser extent, maybe even the Ancient version. Okay, if you really want to use this weapon, then hide the appearance you know show some other weapon over it because this weapon has been known to cause quite a lot of lag it doesn't appear so on my uh, pc over here but for some people for a lot of people actually this can be known to be uh, quite laggy so you definitely want to hide the weapon appearance like this so that it doesn't cause that much lag for you you can earn three free guaranteed dragon coins every single day by clicking on your book of law on the bottom left hand corner you can see here earn dragon coins daily quest just click on it and you'll be taken to this quest whereby all you have to do is fight through one monster it will be a random element boss every single day and it scales to your level so it shouldn't take too hard it usually takes less than five minutes to complete and once you defeat the boss you not only get a large amount of exp and gold but a pop-up on the top of your screen will also show that you have earned your three free dragon coins for that day. During the month of June, which is Dragon Fable's birthday, there may also be an increase in the amount earned. Okay, so last year we had 10 Dragon Coins for the entire month of June by doing this quest instead of the standard tree that we get daily. Feed your dragon every single day. A fat dragon is by far the best pet inside of this game by a mile. And this honestly takes less than 5 minutes to do every single day. So for dragon amulet holders, all you have to do is click on your dragon amulet right here, click on buy dragon food. And here you see there are a few choices of food that you can buy. There's only one choice that causes gold and this gives one training point. The rest causes DCs and can give anywhere between 2 to up to 20 training points. I will honestly not recommend spending your DCs to buy any of these uh, special dragon chow food items. Just buy the one for gold unless you are in a like big rush or huge rush to go ahead and max out your dragon. There is also a dragon food called the really special dragon chow that you can farm from some quests. Okay, most of them have very very low drop rates so honestly I would not recommend farming for it as well. It gives 5 training points but you know unless you just have a lot of times on your hands every single day I will not recommend you guys to farm for it. Now, now, for non-Dragon Amulet holders, the process is slightly longer. You have to go to your Book 1 travel map over here. And then you want to go to Sunbreeze Grove. Okay, so once you are at Sunbreeze Grove, you walk here, go up to Lady Elysia. Okay, click on Baby Dragon Quests and Training. It will be Lady Celestia if you have not done your Firewall Quests yet. Okay, so here you can buy food. It is the same shop. Once you buy it here, and then you can click on Feed Dragon over here. 
Now to add on to my previous point, like I said earlier, Baby Dragon is by far the best pet inside of the game and it can be a real help for you struggling at lower levels to complete some of the more tougher quests. Okay, so just having one point inside of fighting will do wonders because his lash attack does not really scale the dot, does not really scale and you will do a huge amount of damage for lower levels. Now in order to get the Baby Dragon pet, you have to do the entire Dragon Egg Saga. If you want to speed run it as a completely 100% free to play level 1 it takes around 30 minutes you guys can check out my video of me speed running the dragon egg saga over here but if you want an even faster way of getting the drag your pet dragon without even doing the saga there's a way to do it so most people would start off with book 1 and you'll be in book 1 falcon reach just click on your book of law click on end of magic book 3 just go to falcon reach book 3 and then you can walk up to twilly over here and all you have to do is watch this cutscene hero hatching Okay, so once you finish watching this cutscene, your dragon unlocks immediately. Okay, and this works whether or not you are a DA holder or not. So I'm just going to skip through all of the cutscene right here. Now, I highly recommend you guys to go ahead and play through the entire Dragon Egg Saga so you can experience the story for yourself. But you know, if you are really struggling hard with a quest at a lower level and you just want a quick way to get past it, then I highly recommend just one point in fighting for the Dragon Pet. And if you haven't even made it to F Falcon Reach yet, this is a quick way to, you know, just get your Dragon Pet. So complete the quest and then you will be able to summon your Dragon or invite your Dragon from Twilly over here. So I just click on Invite My Dragon here and and you can see here baby dragon has been added to your pet and it's just as simple as that and it takes like less than five minutes to unlock your dragon pet this is a relatively new feature that only got added in recent years so if you're a new or returning player you may or may not know that this actually exists and I actually have gotten quite a few comments about this on some of my videos as well and that is how exactly am I able to control what my dragon does keep in mind here my dragon is in pet form and not guest form yet i am still able to control what skills he uses so the skills that you can use with your baby dragon will depend on what you train your baby dragon okay inside of the training menu over here but how exactly am i able to control my baby dragon pet and it's really just as simple as going to options and toggling on manual pet actions that will allow me to control my baby dragon to either use any one of its skills or to skip its turn entirely so baby dragon is the only pet in the game whereby i can choose what skills it uses if you have a pet with multiple different skills as well like a baby chimera pet whereby it has three skills like the nature attack skill, the fire dot skill, and as well as the BPD shield skill. You cannot choose which skill it uses. It will be completely random. There will only be one button and that is the attack button. And of course, there is the skip button as well if you choose to not attack if your pet for that turn. So you can see here another new feature that was recently added is that after you switch to a new pet, there will be your pet will be stunned for that one turn, but it's only for that one turn. After that one turn, your pet will be able to act normally again, and this will happen every time you switch your pet. So do keep that in mind. When you first start the game and create your character, you can choose from between three base classes, namely Warrior, Mage, and Rogue. And which one is the best base class? In my opinion, there is no best base class because all the base classes will be replaced come mid game to late game. And you almost don't want to use a base class for mid or late game unless you just really like the base classes. Okay, so your choice of base class doesn't really matter that much early on. But when you reach mid to late game, there is one very important factor that Will, that you might probably want to consider when choosing a base class and that is the Italian and Dragon upgrade classes respectively. Those two upgrade classes are only available for Dragon Amulet holders so if you're planning on going the 100% free to play route for the rest of your Dragon Fable life then it probably doesn't matter which base class you pick. So now I'm going to briefly walk you guys through each of the respective base classes and their upgrade classes to see which one is the right one for you. So if you pick a warrior base class then your Italian upgrade class will be the Rift Walker class. It is a class with very high burst damage and your Dragon Upgrade class will be the Dragon Warrior class. It is a class that has very high damage but at the same time you do give up quite a lot of your defenses for that high damage. It's essentially a high risk high reward class. If you chose Mage as your base class then your Italian Upgrade class will be the Ascendant. The Ascendant is a very highly damaging class but at the same time it does have quite a rigid rotation and some setup time. Your Dragon Upgrade 
class will be the Dragon Mage class. It is a class with super high damage and high crit as well. If you chose Rogue as your base class, then your Italian upgrade class will be the Cryptic. The Cryptic used to be the best Italian class out of the three, and on top of that, it is also one of the strongest classes inside of the entire game. But recently, one of its shields got nerfed, so it is no longer as strong. That being said, it is still a very strong class. It has four different shields. On top of that, you also have very high damage. The Dragon upgrade class for the Rogue base will be the Dragon Rogue. The Dragon Rogue is a complete crap class, so don't use that at all. With all that being said, do choose the class that fits your playstyle the best so that you will have the most fun inside of the game. What stats should I train? So to access stat training, just go to Falcon Reach. It doesn't matter if you're on book 1 or book 3, just go down 1 and then go into this building over here on the left hand side here this is where you can train your stats okay so at the end game level there are of course certain stats that you should train depending on which class you like to main but at the lower levels if you're struggling with quests or just the simple story in general i recommend everyone to train endurance first because endurance increases your maximum amount of hp that gives you more survivability in some all battles on top of that it also increases your immobility resistance which decreases your chance of getting stunned by enemy monsters i also recommend you to train wisdom at lower levels so that you have enough mp to use all of your class skills on top of that it also increases your healing and your chance to hit the monster Elemental coverage for your weapons is very very important in Dragon Fable so that you are readily available to face anything that the regular story throws at you. Okay, so as a general rule of thumb, especially for NDA players who do not have access to the bank and only have access to 20 inventory slots, assuming you're not spending any money on the game, then you want to at least have the 8 basic elements, namely dark, water, light, nature, ice, energy, wind and fire okay so these are the basic eight elements if you are 100 percent free to play player that you should have inside your inventory at all times if you are a da player who has access to more inventory slots or the bank you may want to consider getting some of the more specialized elements as well such as the evil element or the good element or you know the silver element <laughs> Level up your potions. Potions are your main source of healing inside of the game and in order to do so, all you have to do is on the Falcon Reach main screen, doesn't matter if you're on book 1 or book 3 Falcon Reach, all you have to do is go left one screen and you can walk into either the health potion shop for health potion training or the mana potion shop for mana potion training. There are currently two methods to train your potions and all you have to do is walk up to the shop owner over here, click on train alchemy and the first method involves uh, two steps, okay? So the first step is gathering reagents. You basically go on this quest whereby you have to collect reagents for that particular level of potion. It will change every single level and at higher levels you may need to collect slightly more reagents as compared to the lower levels. After you've collected all the reagents that you needed to level up that particular level of potion, all you have to do is click on take test and you'll be taken to a small mini game whereby you have to win the mini game in order to level up your potion. The second method, which is also the easier method, and it only got implemented just recently, is to just pay for training. Okay, so the base price will be uh, 1750 gold, and it increases by 250 gold every level stacking, okay? This is also similar for the MP potion. Okay, the MP potion is also very similar to the health potion. The only thing that's different is that the take test mini game it is slightly different compared to the health potion mini game, but you can also pay for training and it will cost the same price as the health potion training. If you are a Dragon Amulet holder and you are struggling with any of the fights inside of the game, then I highly recommend you to purchase food. Okay, so the fastest way to do so is at Falcon Reach Book 3. All you have to do is walk out to Ruby, the Adventure Chef, on the left hand side of the screen over here. Click on Purchase Food, and you can see that there is a whole bunch of food that you can purchase. All of them cost one Defender's Medal each, and if you click on them, they will tell you what each food item does. Okay, food items are temporary and will log and will disappear once you log out. So if you do not use them for the login session, then they will be gone, and you will have to repurchase them during your next login session. The two most popular food items by far is the heart, Rotten Heart Tech and Seaweed, because these two items gives you one full heal each at the cost of no extra turns at all during combat. If you do not have defenders medals to spend or if for whatever reason you do not wish to spend your defenders medals then another way you can get rotten heart tech and seaweed which is the two best and most popular food items inside the game is by going to your book tree travel map over here click on travel map and kingdom of green guard click on magus wood 
and Magus would click on Drown Fortress and Travel. Once you are inside this quest, in order to get Rotten Heart Tag, all you have to do is go right 3 screens. You will need to fight through 3 different monsters before you can get to the chest at the end of the 3 screens, which will give you the Rotten Heart Tag. As for the seaweed food item, it is going to be a little bit more tedious. You have to go left one screen, go up two screens, go right one screen, go left another two screens, and then go up one more screen from the main screen in which you enter the quest from. Open the chest on the left hand side and you will find your seaweed food item hidden inside. There are also three more food items in the game which you can consider getting as they are pretty good. All you have to do is go to your book tree travel map, Shapeless Empire, Nibohim, the forum, travel, all you have to do is go right one screen, go right another screen, go down one screen, and you can see here you can buy these three food items, okay, red fruit, green fruit, and yellow fruit. Again, clicking on them will tell you what they do, and they only last until logout. They also cost one defender's medal each. If food items are still not enough for you, then you may want to consider getting five potions as well. All you have to do is from this screen, go up one screen, go right another screen, and here, this guy sells you 5 potions each, okay, so you're basically refilling your HP and, po and MP potions all the way up to 5 for only a small fee of 2000 gold. Again, this is only available to Dragon Amulet holders. If you are not a Dragon Amulet holder or if for whatever reason you do not or are unable to spend 2000 gold, then another way to do this is by going to the Exaltia Tower in the Inn at the Age of Time. It doesn't matter which floor you go to and just select the option that gives you a HP or MP potion. Once you get it, flee and then rinse and repeat until you get 5 HP and MP potions. This is another method that you can also use to get 5 HP potions and that is by equipping your base class and then having the cloak scrap artifact equipped and using your final skill. Using your final skill with the cloak scrap artifact equipped gives you a 50% chance of getting an extra health potion. This only works for health potions and does not grant you extra mana potions. <laughs> Chesters are another great way of making combat slightly easier for your hero as they provide up to 2 additional meat shields for the monsters to randomly target. On top of that, they also provide additional damage in the form of their own skills and some of their own skills can also have effects that can help you turn the tide of the battle. This being said, if you have guesses in your party, all monsters damage will be increased by 60% so do keep that in mind. For dragon amulet holders, the fastest way to recruit guesses is by using your book of lore over here and you can see here on the top. Uh, right hand corner of the screen there is a guesses button the first tab over here click on it and here you have a wide assortment of guesses which you can use my recommendation for some of the best guesses inside the game would be Rolif, Artix and Nightera. Aegis is also a decent option though the option that you get here is the book 3 Aegis book 3 Aegis is slightly more defensive compared to his book 1 option and his book 1 option is widely considered to be the superior version of Aegis in order to get the book 1 version of Aegis you have to go to your uh, book one timeline over here. This is the fastest way. There is another way to do this and uh, you can go to Ravenloft manually but that is slightly slower. So using the timeline you can go to Ravenloft over here and you'll need to have Soul Weaver or Master Soul Weaver armor equipped in order to recruit Aegis because you'll not be able to invite him to your party if you are not a Soul Weaver. After you have invited him to your party you can change your class once again and he will continue to remain inside of your party. One more guest that is also really good that you can recruit is Sir Leon. Okay, so for Sir Leon, you go to book 3, End of Magic. You can travel there manually on your griffin, but I find this to be the faster method. Okay, so navigate to here, Sheer Destruction to the Shears, and it'll teleport you straight to the front of the Shears Inn over here. Go left one screen, go up one screen, and here you can invite Sir Leon to your party. Sir Leon will be added as the first guest, so if you want, guys want another guest, then you have to invite the guest as guest B, because there is no option to add Sir Leon as the second guest. Sir Leon does have a full set of warrior skills, so keep that in mind. His final is also one of the most powerful final skills for any for all of the guesses inside of the game. Some Dragon Amulet holders are unfortunately unable to invite guesses through the Book of Law. Instead, you will have to manually go to the guest location in order to invite them. For non-Dragon Amulet holders, you are also locked out of some of the better guesses inside the game like Book 3 Artix, like Nightera, like Rolif, but some of the better guesses for non-Dragon Amulet holders will be Sir Leon, which I mentioned earlier, Book 1 Aegis, which I also mentioned earlier, and Book 2 Arctic. So for Book 2 Arctic, the fastest way to invite him is to go to your Book of Law, Book 1 Op Saga, Darkness Op, and then you walk right up to him and you can invite him as either Friend A or Friend B. 
if you're just playing through the regular story and are not max level yet, then the gear that you get from quest drops, as long as they are within 5 to 10 levels of you, they will be more than sufficient for your regular story questing needs. I will highly recommend everyone to not spend gold buying items unnecessarily before you reach level 90 because you'll be switching your gear out very often and more often than not, it is usually better to save up your gold for something good like the Dragon Lord artifacts or for a doom weapon if you so choose. Farm Defenders Medals During War Yes, there are a few methods to farm Defenders Medals outside of war but there is really no big rush to farm them outside of wars because it is just so inefficient compared to farming them inside of wars. If you guys want to know more detail about Defenders Medals, Defenders Medals items and everything you need to know about Defenders Medals, I will link my Defenders Medals guide to the top right hand corner of the screen right now so you guys can go ahead and check out that video. Also if you guys want to know what's the best method for warring in order to farm the Defenders Medals in the most efficient way possible then do go ahead and check out my warring guide also. I will link that video in the card in the top right hand corner of the screen right now as well. For boss fights and challenge fights, check your own status and the monster status every single turn if possible. This is to ensure that you can plan ahead and use the best strategy available to help you win the fight. If the monster has a shield, then you may want to consider using a skill that increases your bonus or healing up for that turn instead until the monster's shield expires. If the monster is getting a huge increase to their damage, then you may want to consider using a shield for that turn instead of using an offensive skill. Or resist actually decreases your healing from potions and skills. Take a look here, I have 69 or resistance and my potion is supposed to heal 1045 HP but however you can see here that my potion only heals me about 700 plus HP. Likewise, if I am able to bring down my all resistance into the negative and also bring down my health resistance into the negatives, the more negative the health resistance and the all resistance is, the higher your healing. Right now, I'm going to gear swap into my healing gear and you can see the huge difference that it makes. Keep in mind that this all resist and healing resistance does not affect full heal food items like rotten heart tech and seaweed but it will affect potion healing, healing from skills and any other food items that heal but are not full heals like your cocoa berry juice. Now you can see here my all resistance and my health resistance is in the negatives and if I heal right now using the same potion, I am healing over 1500 HP as compared to the 700 plus HP I was healing earlier. Buy Dragon Coin packages only during periods of sale. The sale usually comes around the summer and winter time but right now there is a sale ongoing. In fact, it's been ongoing since last year. Okay, and you can see here I can get up to extra 40% more Dragon Coins on my purchase. And the larger the purchase, the larger the bonus. Okay, so unless you are in a rush to get some limited quantity shop item or some monthly uh, DC items, I will highly recommend you guys to wait until a sale period before you go ahead and buy your dragon coins so that you can get the most value out of the money that you are spending. The storybook collection is one of the best utility items that you can buy for your house inside the game and in order to get it, all you have to do is go to your book of law. Click on boosters, house utility items, purchase and you can get the storybook collection. It is also tied for one of the most expensive single dragon coin item inside of the game at 5000 dragon coins. And for that very reason, I will highly recommend everyone to only buy the storybook collection during the Black Friday sales every single year. The Black Friday sales happens on the last week of November every year ever since the items released in 2017. You can see here it was half off when it was first released in 2018 on Black Friday. It also got a 50% discount and it is also similar for both 2019 and 2020. I expect to see a sale for this item every single year and you should definitely save your dragon coins and wait until the Black Friday sales before purchasing the item. If you are getting DC weapons just for a slotted special like the Cicero's Hamster weapons or the Lucky Hammer weapon from Lucky Day then all you have to do is get the lowest leveled version because you get the same effect but for a cheaper cost. And my last tip for you guys is to join the Dragon Faber community. Whether it is on the official battle on forums, whether it is the Dragon Faber subreddit, my YouTube channel, the AE official discord or the fan meet unofficial Dragon's Grass Discord, you are sure to find many helpful tips, tricks, advices from some of the more pro players there. You can also engage in discussion during release days or even on non-release days. Having trouble with challenge fights? No problem. There are plenty of people there to help you. Or maybe you just want to discuss the story, discuss the lore, or you know, just joke about the game and talk about it in general. There are just so many like-minded people out there. And on top of that, the staff also hangs out on the discords as well as the battle on forums.
So that is going to do it for this video guys, my 20 tips and tricks for new and returning players to Dragon Fable. Let me know if you guys have learned something new, whether you're a new player, a returning player, or maybe you're even a veteran player who has learned something new from inside this video. If you have any other tips and tricks that I may have missed out and you would like to share with your other Dragon Fable community, please do leave it down in the comments below, I'll be sure to reach through all of them. And if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more of such future content. Till the next Next time, I'm your host Corban Gaming. Peace out.